Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Madhi, for this invitation. <coughs> After a very colorful... Uh, when we choose, when we advise a particular procedure, we should always be looking at what is that that's going to happen 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, and we should not be looking at the short-term gains. Well, the modern science has shown us many ways to go forward in surgical management of various uh, conditions. Some failed, some had some inbuilt flow. You know, cataract extraction is one of the most highly developed and successful surgical techniques which all of us agree. And we continue to reap benefits from it for patients and for self. But we should remember that clearance extraction in high myopia is a different ballgame altogether. There are events that occur before, during and after the TLS extraction that are harmful and side-threatening to the patient in spite of all the advances in present-day technique. All of us do cataract surgery. And when it comes to doing even a cataract surgery in a myope, there are a lot of things that go against us. We have to be very careful with regards to uh, whether there is excessive turbulence in the eye, whether the chamber instability is high or low, are we using two higher parameters for uh, fluidics? Because every time your phaco tip goes in or your irrigation tip goes in and the AC deepens, there is such a huge pressure radiation which is definitely deleterious and uh, damaging to the peripheral retina and to the posterior fold. And we know that we are dealing with a diseased eye and these things really matter. At such times, are we doing right when we advise a clearance extraction? High myopia is, has several options. We can still continue with glasses. We have contact lenses. We have such a lovely procedure like ICL. Or we could even do LASIK and over correction of glasses or contact lenses if the patient really is so much uh, bothered about not using the glasses. And we should always remember one thing, the optional surgical procedure needs a higher degree of safety than a procedure performed for medical necessities. The current evidence has shown that possible optical benefits of clearance extraction in axial myopia are usually outweighed by the severity of this risk and the complications and by the availability of safer alternatives. We have several studies on the complications of uh, clearance extraction for high myopia. This is one of the many studies which says that 61% of the patients they operated for clearance extraction required capsulotomy at the end of 7 years, 20% required other laser retinal teeth treatment, 16% had posterior retinal detachment and almost as high as 88% had retinal detachment at 7 years in spite of very proper post-op regimen for looking for retinal profit and doing retinal uh, lasers. So this is definitely very hard. Now incidence of retinal detachment after clearance extraction was nearly double the that for persons with mouth are greater than minus 10 who do not undergo clearance extraction. With clearance extraction, you have to lose your unaided near vision, which can be happily retained when ICS is performed. Only a half a minute. When you have a relatively safe procedure which is reversible and a lot less traumatic, why go for such an invasive procedure which is difficult to master to a level where it can be advised for high myopia? When I say it is difficult to master, it's, it's different when you do a cataract surgery for a, for a normal eye, but when it comes to doing clearance for a high myopia, you definitely need to be um, you know, doing it with extreme care. In conclusion, I strongly propose that ICL should be the way forward for high myopia. In such time, let me find a better technique. Thank you.